Hey everybody, Alex here. A bunch of you have seen that I've been recently making bismuth crystals. These crystals actually form naturally according to very, very slow cooling. And I will show you how to make them. These are great for artwork or jewelry or in Lindsay's case, she made a very, very nice wine charm out of the bismuth. A few okay. things about bismuth. First of all, it is technically radioactive, but its half-life is somewhere to the tune of 100 trillion years. In other words, it's quite stable and safe to work with. Now, when you buy bismuth, it comes in a chunk like this called an ingot, I-N-G-O-T. Um, now, this ingot is usually around 20 to $25 a pound. I got mine from Roto Metals, but eBay is a great source for this stuff, you want 99.9% .9 pure. And the, least, the less impurities, the better this is gonna turn out. Some other things you're going to need. Stainless steel measuring cups, and, or any kind of cup, even a muffin tin. But you want stainless steel, the thicker, the better. It's a better insulator. You're also going to need something to stir the bismuth with and remove the slag. So I recommend a junk spoon. Do not use your wife's good spoons. She'll get mad at you. You also might need some aluminum foil. This works great as an insulator and to support the cups. What you're going to do is form it into a pan like this and set your measuring cup in the middle. Another thing you're going to need is some kind of oven mitt. These are great, I love the Of Glove, but uh, these also work. And also, don't forget, safety first. And for those of you who want to see what happens with this stuff when it's rapidly cooled, well, I tried to make a billet with a loaded soda can. Yeah, that's on my ceiling right now. So uh, probably best to uh, wear the safety glasses. All right, the key to making bismuth crystals is to heat this up so it's just barely above the melting point, which I believe is 520 degrees Fahrenheit, and then bring it to a cool as slow as possible. The slower it cools, the larger crystals you're going to get. You're gonna okay, as you can see, we have two pots on the stove. I've got this pot over here hot enough to melt down the bismuth, and this one over here isn't quite hot enough to quite make a liquid bismuth. It's still quite hot, but not hot enough. The aluminum around it works very well to keep the heat in. Again, we're trying to cool it as slow as we possibly can. All right, as you can see, our bismuth is melting down fairly well here. Stir it around a little bit. You wanna wait till that's fully melted down. So, with that, we will prepare for our pour. Doing our best to leave the slag behind, just pour the liquid bismuth. Okay. And we'll move this back over here. We want to remove this top oxidized layer so that it's still shiny. When it stays shiny, leave it alone and let it cool very slowly. The, the longer the cooling process takes, the better the crystals will be. Okay, it's been about four minutes. Definitely have some hard material here. Uh, but nothing there. Uh, but I am definitely getting some uh, solids here. So we're uh, just about ready to pour. Take this, and the key is to pour very, very slowly. As many of the crystals are stuck on the top. And you don't want to pour out your nice crystals. And there you have it. 
nicely formed bismuth crystals. Now removing the crystals can be quite a trick. You want the bismuth cup to cool fully, that way it's easiest to get out of there. Sometimes just flipping it over and giving it a hit brings it out, other times not. In that case, take a spoon or another measuring cup or even a hammer. Give it a few hits. There it is. Beautiful crystalline bismuth. Now I know some of you like to do uh, artwork and one way to do that is to use a piece of wire or a paper clip. Once everything uh, starts to harden up just a little bit, just uh, in insert your, uh, whatever you want to uh, have a bond slowly. and then it should sit in place and uh, crystals should form around it uh, pretty much. Now a lot of the crystals are formed on the top, um, but it appears I've got quite a few uh, crystals. So uh, let's see what I can pull out. Look at that. Came right with it. Let's see what this one got. Very nice. That one didn't turn out so well. All right, now for the uh, ones you, you wish you would have come out better, you can always reheat your mixture or do another pour and then again, drop them back down in and get some more crystal formations. Again, the crystal formations on them won't melt away. Because the system's already cooling. 